Hello everyone and welcome to the pediatric course. I'm Dr. Amal El Faramawi, Professor of Pediatrics and Shams University. Today's lecture is about normal growth, development and puberty in children and adolescents. These are very important indicators of health and wellness of children. In this lecture, I will give you some facts, figures, and a lot of calculations focusing only on normal children. Abnormalities will be discussed later on. So by the end of this lecture, you will be able to classify the pediatric age group to different phases, to know what's meant by growth, development, and puberty, to recognize the importance of assessment of them for every child in each health visit, to know factors affecting them as well as general principles concerning them. These will be covered in the first segment of the lecture. In the second and third segments, you will be able to assess growth through anthropometric measurements and to learn how to use growth charts in addition to the alarming signs in growth monitoring that you should be careful about. In the fourth segment, you will know different aspects of development, the motor, mental, language, and socio-emotional, and how to assess them in addition to the alarming signs that you should notice during assessment of development. In the last segment, you will know other complex aspects of development in addition to assessment of stages of puberty and the alarming signs during puberty assessment. To start with, you have to know that children are among the most vulnerable group in society. Thus, their needs require special attention and continuous monitoring. Pediatrics is the branch of medicine concerned with the health of children, their growth, development, and maturation, and their opportunity to achieve full potential as healthy adults. Children are not simply little adults. Their immature physiology, continuous physical, mental, and emotional changes should always be considered in diagnosing illnesses as well as in prescribing medications. The human life can be classified to prenatal life and postnatal life. The prenatal period is the period from conception to birth and it is classified to zygote, embryo, and fetus. It is a very critical period in human development. The intrauterine environment during this period is of great importance for a healthy fetus to be a healthy child after birth. It is affected by maternal nutrition, diseases, medications, infections, etc. Any insult during this period can lead to permanent consequences later on. The full term newborn is a baby born between 37 to 40 weeks of gestation, while the premature is a baby born before 37 weeks of gestation, and this carries a major morbidity and mortality risks according to the gestational age. Postmature is a baby born after 40 weeks of gestation. After birth starts the postnatal period. The pediatric age group extends from birth to 18 years of age. It is a very dynamic period characterized by continuous changes. So a three-month-old child is different from a four-year-old child or a 14-year-old child. So the whole pediatric age group is classified to phases. From zero to 28 days is the neonatal period. It is also a very critical period as it is a transition from the intrauterine to extrauterine life with a lot of adaptation mechanisms that in some newborns do not occur smoothly. Infants are those aged from one month to 12 months, toddlers from one to two years, preschool children from 2 to 6 years of age, school children from 6 to 12 years, adolescents or teenagers from puberty to adulthood usually from 13 to 19 years. After this starts adulthood. Each stage has its characteristics, risks, and health hazards, especially the neonatal period and adolescence. Now, growth is defined as an increase in physical size of the whole body or any of its parts. The neonate is born with certain weight, height, and skull circumference and pro progressively gain weight, increase in length, and his or her skull grows, etc. While development is acquisition of skills and the capacity to function independently, 
the child progresses from a totally dependent infant at birth to a mobile verbal person who is able to communicate with others. On the other hand, puberty is the period of sexual maturation and the capability of reproduction. It is associated with the development of secondary sex characteristics and rapid growth. So we can say that growth is a physical process while development is functional and puberty is maturational. But what's the importance of assessment of growth, development, and puberty for every child, every health visit? First, growth is a key feature of children and adolescents. Children with abnormal growth or development are having underlying disease. Early growth fa failure may have persistent consequences for growth and puberty progression in later life. So assessment of growth, development, puberty, and behavior is an essential component of pediatric health surveillance, as it is a way to assess health and wellness of children and also to indicate good control of chronic illnesses. This means that if a child with chronic illness like renal disease, malabsorption, or chronic anemia is growing well and progressing to puberty, in the proper timing, this indicates a good control of his disease. The second point is that parents are always concerned about the growth of their children. So physicians should know the normal parameters in order to recognize deviation from the normal. The underlying causes of deviation from normal should be identified and treated as early as possible for better results. Several factors can influence growth, development, and the onset of puberty in humans. Interaction between both genetic and environmental factors, which can be referred to as nature and nurture interaction, play a vital role in human growth and development. The genetic makeup of the child, which is the inherited genes from both parents, is responsible for his or her height and timing of puberty, among other inherited traits example skin color, eye color, susceptibility to certain diseases. So the child of short parents will be also short and this is called familial short stature. Most children with intrauterine growth retardation will catch up to reach normal height during the first or second year of life, but some of them remain short for age and need growth hormone replacement and some may also suffer from other endocrinal disturbances. Children in families with lower socioeconomic status have poorer growth and development than children in higher socioeconomic status families. This can be attributed to inadequate nutrition, poor housing, shortage of health services, lack of care and lack of stimulating environment that provides the child with new experiences. Adequate nutrition is mandatory for general health. Malnutrition can hinder the child's ability to grow normally, leaving him stunted, and stunted growth can be permanent. A child may never achieve normal height or body weight if he is chronically malnourished. Child height in the first five years of life is directly related to his or her adult height. Absence, neglect, or abuse by parents will lead to emotional deprivation and psychological problems that will be reflected on growth, development, and behavior of the child. As being loved, belonging to a family, and feeling safe are basic needs for a human being. Hormones, especially growth hormone, thyroid hormone, sex hormones directly control growth and puberty and in case of disruption due to endocrinal diseases, there will be various forms of abnormalities. Chronic severe illnesses as liver disease, renal disease, chronic severe anemia are often associated with disorders of growth and development as well as delayed puberty. It has been noticed that rates of growth during childhood have increased considerably during the past 50 to 100 years in all developed countries. This is called secular trend. 
there is secular increase in stature associated with acceleration of maturation and lower age of menarche. It could reflect environmental improvements, especially changes in health practice, nutrition, and living conditions. There are general principles concerning growth that you should keep in mind. First, growth doesn't progress at the same rate all the time. If you look at this figure, you will see that there is a very high growth rate in the first year of life, which is the infantile spurt. Then growth continues, but at a slower rate till the age of five, when there is a plateau of growth till the age of puberty, when there is another growth spurt to reach determined adult height. The second point is that not all body parts grow in the same rate at the same time. If you look at this figure, you will find that the maximum growth of the skull ever occurs in the first year of life. Then skull growth is very minimal later on to reach adult size by the age of five to 10 years. Third point is that parents usually compare their children to others. You have to assure them that every child grows in his or her unique way, even twins, and that there is always a range of accepted normal, not only one figure. It is also useful to know these principles concerning development to be able to memorize the sequence of events that occur at every stage of different aspects of development. First development proceeds in cephalocaudal pattern, that's from head to toes, and proximodistal pattern, that's from the center of the body to the peripheral and from general to specific movement. This is related to CNS and peripheral nerves myelination. So the child will first be able to control muscles of the neck, then the trunk, then the lower limbs, as you see in the image. Also, he will be able to move the general big muscles first, then the more sophisticated fine motor movements of the small muscles of the hands. Second, you have to know that development is a continuous process. Arrested development is considered abnormal when the child is no more acquiring new skills. And also it is abnormal if there is a regression of skills, which means that the child was able to say words, for example, but now he lost this skill. The third point is that development occurs in a stepwise pattern that is predictable. For example, if the child can walk supported now, so the next, the next step should be that he will be able to walk unsupported and so on. Here are some facts regarding puberty. It usually occurs earlier in girls than boys, as it occurs between 10 and 14 in girls, 12 and 16 in boys. In girls, it starts with thalarche, which is breast enlargement. The boxes here represent the range of age of occurrence, while the arrows represent the mean. Thalarche will be followed by adrenarche, which is the appearance of pupical and axillary hair, then the occurrence of peak height velocity Lastly, menarche usually at the age of 12.8 years. While in boys, puberty starts with increase in testicular volume, more than 4 milliliter, followed by the appearance of pubic hair, then growth of the penis, lastly the occurrence of peak height velocity at the age of 14 years. Stages of puberty will be discussed in the last segment of this lecture. Well, this is the end of the first segment. Let's now find how to assess growth in the next segment.